look, it's a tough time to own the managed care stocks. Jeez, I mean, right now, Wall Street's still terrified about what might happen to the health insurance industry if one of the Democratic candidates who went single payer managed to win the White House. Take Centene. That's the big health plan provider for all sorts of government-sponsored programs from Medicare and Medicaid to the Obamacare exchanges. The stock has been pummeled. It's ridiculous. It doesn't help that Centene announced they're buying WellCare for $17 billion back in March. It's a deal that will make them the undisputed king of government-sponsored health plans. I think it's a great idea. However, suddenly people are leery of the whole managed care space. And it doesn't help that Dan Loeb, that's the infamous or famous activist investor, has been trying to shoot down the deal. He wanted Centene to put itself up for sale instead, but it doesn't look like he's going to get his way. So can this stock turn itself around? It's down about 7% for the year. Let's take a closer look with Michael Nidorf. He's the president, chairman, and CEO of Centene, St. Louis Bays, who just held his June investor meeting earlier today. Mr. Nidorf, welcome back to Mad Money. Thank you, Jim. Well, there you go. Congratulations Thank are you. in order. One of the more exciting years for um, certainly your first, your first Stanley Yes, That's right. Well, we played Boston 49 years ago. In the finals. Well, looks like that. So it was it our turn. Took 49 years. Yeah. But welcome back. <laughs> Fantastic. And congratulations. All right. So give us the gist about the uh, uh, the analyst day because you had a lot to cover. This industry is more controversial than it's been in a long time. We we spend a lot of our time talking about the systems, the capability, how we have we're modernizing what managed care does. We we are clearly a tech company that has moved to in healthcare. Right. And we showed them all the systems, the ecosystem we have, that really manages the care, improves outcomes, but at the same time, better, better quality, lower cost. And we took them through all those details. Now, to, you, you would, uh, the company you're trying to buy, while a good company, I think, does not have the same, uh, let's say, artificial intelligence that you guys have about what outcomes are. So that could be very, very positive for the two. It's going to be real positive when, they, when we move them to our systems. It's going, to be, it's going to be very helpful for the total company. Now, there are, you know, Dan Loeb is in there. And look, everyone has a right to an opinion about what should happen. I personally thought, I was trying to figure out why anyone, a rationale, and I asked Dan, I sent him an email, didn't get a response. The rationale to be able to, for you to put yourself up for sale, given the fact that you've been one of the better performers in the group. Well, he should be smarter than that. He knows, he knows that we, we have an agreement. He probably read it and said, I can't talk to him if I wanted to. OK, I mean, that's that's part of it. But this, it makes no sense. These are individuals and I understand and they, and they can be good investors right, at times. Right. And there's some companies they really help get things squared away. But they're event purchasers or investors. Event purchasers. Like yeah, they're, they're doing that for United Technologies, too, yeah, you know, great yeah, they, they, they go in, they do it. They hope that if, if they could get that transaction going where somebody else buys it, they get a quick hit of 10, 20 percent. And move on. Okay. That's not the case here, and uh, it's now it's now long past that. I think. I've often tried to figure out. We always hear about the skyrocketing healthcare costs. Skyrocketing healthcare costs. Are they not looking at your model? Your model, to me, has said that healthcare costs are actually under control, or maybe going lower. One and a half to two percent a year, and and better outcomes. It's it's really working on the marketplace. Eighty percent of the people we knew every year. Uh, we're in 32 states. You know, it's like I invest. I told the investors today, it's like yourselves. You have a portfolio. Sometimes we have a state that has some trouble, mm -hmm. but that's okay. We have 31 others that help carry well, it. Well, I mean, did you it. give any, any, anything about, say, what you've done with Fidelis, which is it was a very good outfit, but I think, them. again, lacked your skill sets. That's right. We, we showed that today. We showed how the integrations on these companies go very well. And right. Fidelis... It's been incredible. I told once, I said to somebody, if I could find more Fidelis's, I'd do one in the morning and one in the afternoon. That's great. All right, now, on Thursday, President uh, Trump has been, he's been doing a lot of stuff behind the scenes about health care. And he's got these, uh, these health care reimbursement arrangements that he's talking about, which you know, you're talking about an HRA, basically. It's like the IRA. Make sense to you? No. 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 I mean, it, it does for does, some. Does Naomi, it maybe? Does, it does, but not for our population. All right, tell me. They, our population is subsidized. Right. Why should they take some with less benefit? They don't know how to manage the care. Right. Not, they don't have the experience. We're, we're using the marketplace to teach people how to use insurance. Right. Okay? We're teaching them to fish instead of giving them a fish. We want to move them from Medicaid to the marketplace. Right. So it takes that process to get them there. You give them an HRA, some people it's great for, but you have to know what you're doing. 
Okay, when I hear the HRA, I mean, obviously, the employers get to just like a copay for employers. Yeah. The thing I think of is, well, is this just another thing that is going to be used against the Republicans by some of the more uh, Medicare for all Democrats saying, look, the, the, these guys are just, once again, it's a limited number of people who are being helped. You know, Medicare for all answers the questions where they don't seem to ever really question how much it would cost. Yeah, I was going to say, have you seen the lowest number over 10 years is $25 trillion. Trillion. The high end is $38 trillion. Well, I mean... You know, the total budget for 10 years is $58 trillion. But in this new world, Michael, it, people, there's an alternative fact, it, it, world that we have in politics, where you can just say, you know, by the time we get there, we'll have solved this, and it'll cost $5 okay. trillion. That's right. Well, that, that's it's a nice concept. What they're All saying right. is, we'll do away with the insurance companies. The money we save there will help pay for it. Now, government really is much more efficient than private inter enterprise. It's not going to work. Not I, I've not met anybody that believes it has any hope of being done. The only way single-payer works is they withhold services. Right. And Americans are not going to accept that. Okay, let's leave it at that, because I think that's absolutely true. That's been my view forever. Doesn't make sense. It won't work. It won't. It's too utopian. Okay, there's Michael Nyroff. He's the president, chairman, and CEO of Centene. Yeah, sure, we'd love to have great health care for all. But I prefer to have health care insurance for as many as we can. Mad Money's back in. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.